Hello class, welcome to the first lecture for chapter two, 2-2. Two two. We're talking about angles and I have a question for you. What does it even mean to try to talk about sine of 220 degrees? In 2-1, you made some graphs of some sine waves, and they kept going forever and ever to the right, past 360, past 180, on and on and on. And what could that even mean? Could you draw a picture of what that means? If, if we think about sine and cosine as Sokotoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then we're thinking in terms of triangles, and there's no way that we're going to get something bigger than 180. The biggest angle uh, in a triangle uh, has to be less than 180, because all three sides have to add up to 180. So what does that even mean to say sine of 220? Doesn't make any sense. Think about that. We're going to use a circle because a circle can go all the way to 360 and beyond. It can keep going around and around and around forever as many times as we want. It can go backwards. There's no limit on what the angle can be. True trigonometry is not on a triangle as much as it is done on a circle. There are some triangle kinds of ways that we can think about it, but really it's ultimately about circles. Surprise. So the first thing that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to make sure that we're talking about the same angle. We need to be able to draw them and graph them and communicate with one another in regards to angles. So the first thing that you have to recognize is that in math, we always draw our angles starting off with going to the right. That's sort of home base. If you think about 3 o'clock on a clock, that's where we begin. And then unlike a clock, we proceed in a counterclockwise direction so that this angle of, I don't know, maybe I'm doing 135-ish in this case, needs to start at the 3 o'clock position and then rotate counterclockwise and then we draw the other side of our angle that way. So this is what is called standard position. It's where you've got an initial side at 3 o'clock and a terminal side that reflects your rotation in a counterclockwise direction. And we're going to document all our angles this way. This is the mathematical way to talk about angles. Now, the same angle can have more than one name, that you end up going to the same place, but you can get there in a variety of ways. So uh, let's make this be 165. Uh, let's pretend that I did that, 165. And now you could go, just turn like we did. You could just take that path that we followed, or you could go all the way around the circle once and get there. And that, that would be, you would end up facing the same place. I mean, in real life, that's different than if I just look at you and then turn all the way around and look at you. Those, those end up feeling different, but in the end, you're facing the same way. So what is that turn? Well, that, that turn all the way around is 360 degrees and we ended up at 165 more than uh, where we just all the way one turn from the beginning. So altogether, that makes 5, 2, carry the 1, 525 degrees. So that's, that's one additional way that you could get there. You could also go backwards. You could go in a clockwise direction and if, and if we had gone all the way around in the clockwise direction, if we had gone all the way back to here, well, we call that negative 360, that that is a turn not having gone in a counterclockwise direction, but going in a clockwise direction, we're going to consider that the negative turn, is that normally counterclockwise is positive, so uh, clockwise is negative. Now, if we don't go all the way back to the beginning but stop short and end up at that angle we've been talking about, that's saying I want to do 165 but get there the, the negative way. You add those two numbers together and you get negative 195. So this is another name for that same angle. 
So there's, there's already three names for it. We've got 165, 525, negative 195. There are an infinite number of ways we could do that. We could keep turning and adding 360s, or we could keep turning the other way and adding negative 360s. Either way, we're going to end up in the same spot. So this, this is an important thing to be able to simplify how many angles we talk about. We just usually restrict ourselves to talking about 0 to 360. So we need to be able to deal with these other angles that have gotten out of control. Now, these angles between 0 and 360, that sounds like a lot. But really, we can even be more simple than that. And most things are, and all things, are just plus or minus versions of what happened in the first quadrant, in the first 90. So what I mean is, think about uh, your, you've got somewhere up here that you could have turned any one of those angles. And you might, you might end up at some spot up there. Well, if I take that angle and instead of starting at 0, and then up there is 90, and over there is 180, and down there is 270, and 0 is the same as 360, is that if I think about going not up from 0, but back from 180, so like that, 180 minus our angle, then and we in this is this is one of the weird things about precalculus is we use Greek letters not X and Y and A and B and C those are usually lengths of sides we like to use Greek letters so here's this letter theta that we like to use for a sort of unknown angle that uh, if we if we go back from 180 notice how I've ended up at the same spot there and that my X value is just a reflection of my original x value. So wherever you were going to end up over here at some x and y, over here you're going to end up at that exact same uh, y value. You're going to have that exact same y value, but your x will be a negative version of that. Again, if I did that in the third quadrant, where instead of going uh, less than 180, I went more than 180 to that spot down there, 180 plus that initial uh, theta that we did in the first quadrant. Again, now my x value is exactly the same as it was in the second quadrant, which is the negative. And my y value is the reflection that way. So there we've ended up at negative x, negative y. Lastly, we could have backed up from 360 that same theta there and had 360 minus theta. That would have taken us to the same x as we did, but the negative y. So this bow tie pattern uh, that always reminds me of Mr. Moeller's uh, bow ties that he wears is a set of angles that really, if you just ignore plus and minus are really all the same as each other. And so we call these reference angles. If I wanted to look them up, I don't really need to learn everything about all four quadrants. All these other quadrants are versions of what goes on in the first quadrant. So if you master the first quadrant, which we'll get to uh, in a separate lecture, but that if, if you master the first quadrant, then all the other quadrants are just versions of that, where you've either backed up from 180 or gone past 180 or backed up from 360. So this reference angle concept is really helpful for reducing the amount of stuff you need to learn. So this is, this is something that you should be excited about. Learn less. Learn a couple of these tricks. Do I flip the x? Do I flip the y? Do I flip both? That these all end up being super related and, and time saving and brain space saving. So this is to your great benefit. So I would like for you now to take a minute, and I've written three angles here, on, or four angles on the slide, that I would like for you to try to draw and then calculate the reference angle for, OK? So take a minute, try to find a, uh, a piece of paper and draw them, and then calculate what the reference angle would be. What's their first quadrant version so that we can simplify this and not have to learn so much? So take a minute, 
pause the video, and see if you can draw and find the reference angle for these. And we're back. So, how did it go? Were you able to draw these? Let's uh, look at the answers to this real quick. What we're talking about here, first of all, is a 71 degree angle. So that's gonna be up here somewhere, 71 degrees. And that is standard position. I've got my initial side here and my terminal side there. And that is how you're supposed to draw it, starting at three o'clock turning in a counterclockwise direction. The nice thing about the first quadrant is, is its own reference angle. It is its own reference angle. You don't have to wonder any way to make it a first quadrant angle. It already is. Next up, we've got a 300, no, 133. So that's over here somewhere. All this big turn is 133 degrees. And now the question is, What's the reference angle? How much less than 180 is that? So 180 minus 133, let me write that in a way that I can actually solve, is, break the eight, 177 is four. So this angle right here is 47 degrees. And that would be the most comparable thing that we could use. If we knew stuff about 47 degrees, we would know everything we needed about 133. We just might need some pluses and minuses. Next, this is getting kind of crowded, so I'm gonna erase a little bit there. Next up, we've got 240, 254. Well, that is more than 180 and less than 270. So it's somewhere in here, that kind of direction. 254 degrees. But the question is, how much more than 180 is it? The reference angle is gonna be right there. So 254 minus 180, four is, break the two, seven, aha! That is a 74 degree angle there. That is my reference angle. So if I know about 74 degrees, I know about 254 degrees. Lastly, three, 17 is less than 360 and more than 270, so it's somewhere over there. And again, how much less than 360 is it to be able to find this reference angle in there? 360 minus 317, gotta break that, three, four, aha! It is a 43 degree reference angle. So, hope you got that right. If not, practice thinking about the bow tie, um, we're always trying to get to the closest horizontal, which in the uh, first and fourth quadrant is the right side of the x-axis, and in the second and third, it is the left side of the x-axis. So we're always trying to get down to that x-axis, uh, make these reference angles comparison to the x-axis. Now. Somebody might give you, and this happens a lot in real life when you're measuring angles, a very, very large number. You might get uh, a dizzyingly large amount of four, eight, nine, seven degrees. Yikes, it's way too big. So you know that you can add or subtract 360 and it doesn't change anything. And you might just start saying, well, I wanna subtract 360 from that and that would end up, uh, oh, didn't need to do that. That would end up taking you a very long time. This is gonna be a lot of subtracting by 360. So there are some other things that you might do to be able to get there faster. So let's look at the calculator here. If we have 4897, and we wanna know how many turns did somebody do to, to get to that ridiculously large number. How many turns? Let's see how many 360s there are in there. Well, there's over 13 of them in there. So, but the real question is how many more than that? So turning around one, two, three, you know, turning around a lot, a lot of times, all those turns, those 13 turns in this case, they really don't matter. What, what matters is how much beyond the full rotation is it? 
So what I want to do is I want to take this big number and I want to subtract off all those 360s. Not just one 360, but 13 360s. So I can see that this is 13 turns plus 270 degrees. Let me write that down. 4897 degrees is 13 times 360 plus 217. And really what we care about is that 217. All those turns won't make the math any different. They might make you dizzy, but they're not going to change what the angle is. So there's a way for you to simplify angles like that. Lastly, we need to consider uh, this uh, crazy old system that used to exist in the world uh, before our current obsession with decimals and calculators and things. So the Babylonians, going way back now, 3,000 years, they were obsessed with 60. 60 was their favorite number. It's a pretty cool number. It divides evenly by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. It's a really, really useful number if you've got to do the division by hand. Nowadays, we don't care so much. We got a calculator, it'll do the division for us. We don't need to work so hard. So we do things out of 100 or out of 1,000 or out of 10,000. This is, this is easier for us to do decimal, base 10 stuff. But there's still some times when you get information in this old, wacky way. So for example, if you look on Wikipedia up here in the corner, here on uh, WCA's page, you can see that the location is given, yeah, so we know 38 degrees and 90 degrees. That's easy to figure out. But what are these weird little foot and inches signs, the tick and the two tick thing like that? So it turns out this is what is called minutes and seconds. So you got, you got a picture, you're, you're an ancient Babylonian, so here's a huge drawing of 90 degrees. Now, most of the time, a degree, one degree at a time, is totally useful. But when you start talking about dimensions as big as the Earth, let's kind of zoom in, let's pretend we're zooming in here, and here's one degree. Well, by the time you're way out, you know, the uh, radius of the uh, the, circ the circumference of the Earth is 25,000 miles. So you've got a pretty huge amount of space. Even if we divide that by 360, you've got a huge amount of space within one degree. So if you want to chop that up and you're obsessed with 60, you're going to split this same one degree up into 60 minutes. And you're going to use one little tick mark to indicate that. Now, again, uh, that might be something that is still too big for you to be uh, dealing with. And you might want to try to split uh, that one, uh, one minute. You might need to split that up. So let's try uh, blowing that up. You've got one of these, and you want to split that into uh, six, into smaller chunks, so you're going to split that up into 60 seconds. So that one second is a very, very small amount. So 360 degrees in a circle, 60 minutes uh, in a degree, 60 seconds in a minute. So it's just the same as the math that you're used to with clocks. 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. But it gets obnoxious having to convert back and forth between these. If you're looking at the WCA page on Wikipedia and you want to know exactly where that is and use a sort of decimal nice number, you want to be able to convert that. So you could, let me write down, WCA is at, uh, let's see here, 38 degrees and 38 minutes and 13 seconds north. So if we want to convert that, we could say that this is 38 plus 38 sixtieths plus 13 36 hundredths. That's pretty obnoxious. The calculator, again, always lovely calculator, can come to your rescue. If you say, I want to find 38 and where's the degree symbol? 
So if you were investigating this, maybe you would look here right above the word apps, and there's the word angle. So second apps, aha, there's the degree symbol. So I want that, and then I need 38 minutes. Second angle, I saw it, there it is. There's the minute symbol. And then for some janky weird reason, the uh, other symbol, the last symbol we want is right there above the plus sign. So if I press second, I'll get the stuff that's blue on my calculator here. I need the alpha button to get that symbol there. And then all you gotta do is press enter, and of course your calculator loves degrees as much as, I mean decimal as much as you do, and it will convert it for you. And if you saw up there in the second uh, angle, there was a convert me to degrees, minutes, seconds button, and it will convert it back for you. So something that comes up from time to time, ye old system of yesteryear, we need to be able to do like they did in the good old days and deal with degrees, minutes, seconds. Old thing laying around, sometimes it'll come up. What I would like for you to come to class with next time is having done the reading analysis in 2-2 uh, and uh, having done the review questions, let's keep the brain going, gotta keep everything together here, of one through 10, and in the actual problems, numbers one and two. So, hope to see you uh, in class and hope you have a great day.